Ah, uh, hello. As you can see, it is a week later. And, uh, yeah, basically, uh, Wolfram Desktop kind of sucks, so I ended up uh, copying all of the code that we wrote together into this script called trainRNN.wls. And then from there, I just, I can run the training without crashing by just doing Wolfram script dash F train rnn.ws. Also, I found the best plugin available for uh, IntelliJ, which colors all of your curly brackets, which is super nice. Anyway. So yeah, this is, I've tried out a few architectures at this point. There has been a 512 node GRU, a 1024 node LSTM, and a 416 node LSTM. And each one of these things takes like a day to train. But uh, the results end up pretty good. So, uh, oh, my screen is the wrong size. One second. Okay, I guess you'll be uh, trying to fit as best you can. Okay, okay, close enough. I'll just try to keep everything in this corner on that side. Okay, so. Yeah, basically, you know that make music function? Uh, made some slight modifications to it. The network architecture is basically the same, but instead of using multi-layer recurrent networks, I've switched to single layer. I think the multi-layer would work, but I just don't have enough GPU power or time to uh, properly train multi-layer. I think it would take way longer than we want to be waiting here. So let's just uh, generate some music so we can listen to it. So. I guess I can show you the architecture. Now I have, uh, you know, the notes, the note data. I concatenate it, send it to the LSTM, and now I have this output processing layer, which is really just a linear layer, and then I concatenate it with the input. And the linear layer is like, it's a linear CLU dropout, linear CLU dropout. Three, three sets of that, so it's really three linear layers. But then I can cat the output, so the output, or I can cat it with the input. So these two, uh, the note decoder and the note data decoder, they still have the ability to see everything in the direct output of the LSTM, if that's a better path. But yeah, so let's listen to some more songs. So this one just finished training like a few hours ago. But yeah, as you can see, I mean the beginning's boring, but like there's a lot more complexity in the generated uh, music data than there was in the beginning. See if we can get something faster. I guess that's faster, but Yeah, and you can see this one's generating a lot of long, repetitive sequences. Ooh, that one looks interesting. Okay. Ooh.
I need to increase the volume. So this is uh, very slow. That one's very slow too. I don't know. They're all seemingly pretty slow. Ooh, that looks interesting. Interesting. That one was kind of neat. So the ones that I like, I'm saving them to MIDI files. So that's percent output number 117. And in Mathematica, output syntax is 117. So as you can see, I'm just taking the date, the current date and time, exporting the RNN underscore LSTM underscore number of nodes in the one layer LSTM concatenated with the date string and then I add this dot mid file extension for to indicate this is a MIDI file and just from that dot mid export knows that I'm trying to export a MIDI file now I can, I can just take this generated sound object uh, so you can see I do head of percent 117 it gives me sound because it is a sound data structure and I can just export that so there we go RNN LSTM date time and then dot mid and so yeah I'm just gonna I, I've just been doing that for these three architectures over the past few days so the ones that I like I'm kind of saving uh, Oh, well, that's pretty fast too. kind of cool okay let's save that one too one two one okay anyway so yeah let's actually look at some of the other ones that I have uh, I've actually saved some of them into uh, files so this one is called Forgotten memory. So I have FLAC files. I'm going to post these on my website at some point. But yeah, so I have FLAC files, which 50 megs of beautiful, high quality audio. And I have MP3s and MP3 small. 
with like 10 megs. Okay, let's do this. So this is one of my favorites. This is from the first model that finished a uh, GRU, uh, 512 node GRU. So I'm gonna start this from the beginning so we can listen to it. restart that so that the uh, audio is better okay it's still really loud Okay, so yeah, I really just liked the beginning of that piece. Uh, you can f you'll can, you be able to find this song somewhere, probably in the description, if you want to hear more of it. But yeah, I mean, it's really, it's really nice. Like, it had some interesting harmony and melody and all of that kind of together. So, yeah. Okie doke. So, let's kind of go over the process that I have. So yeah, like I said, I have this train rnn.wls file that I made. And so that 512 layer LSC I'm actually ended up doing really, really well, which I was kind of surprised at. So I'm gonna reset some stuff. I'm gonna put this back at 12 hours. It's basically at noon tomorrow, I will be able to see its progress and it will save the output. It does training check pointing every two hours too. So I can always stop it and resume it if I want, but. So the way the script works, like I said, I basically, well not basically, I did just copy all of the uh, code that we made in the notebook the other day. So I have load our MIDI tools split train valve all that stuff i actually disabled this because it seemed uh actually that's another thing i wanted to see what validation said i did disable validation so this is basically just like trying to overfit the training data but i mean this doesn't sound like anything in the training data the lowest error model was the 1024 node lscm and i only train I only trained that to around 10% note error. So even then it's not perfectly copying the data, but I will re-enable the train valve split. 
So as you can see here, I just said n-train equals encoded instead of splitting it like it was before. So we shall re-enable splitting, get rid of that. Okay, n-train. So instead of n-train, I now want to use val encoder, or sorry, encoded validation data, length of encoded validation data. And that's it. Okay. So, what else do we have? We have, oh yeah, this is just a simple output processing node, which is a couple of linear layers, linear layer CLU activation dropout with alpha dropout to maintain uh, the distribution that we want during training and that's concatenated with the input so we don't lose data it's just an optional path that the data can take if it's if it's required so yeah we have that output that's new and then the other thing is like i said i'm using a single layer lstm which is sent to the output linear layer stack and then we're, that's going to our note decoder and note data decoder with the three also, I added logistic sigmoid function and just times three multiply so that the data has acceptable ranges. I'm just trying to change that to 0.4 or times four because that means the note can be up to four seconds long max. And then that's all mean squared error. So really it's it doesn't matter completely. So that could be optimized or whatever. But I can change the loss function and the scaling for each of these separately so that it's the correct range, but I don't feel like it yet. I'll do that in the future. So, okay, like I said, the 416 node was able to get to like 10, 15% error on memorizing the data set. So it's, uh, let's change that to like back to what, 2, 256 or something. Uh, maybe, I don't know, 128. Okay, I'll do 256, and we'll see if that is uh, enough to train correctly and perform well on our data. So we have net port. We have the node data and nodes going to vectorize. It goes to a stack operator, which is... I mean, I'm, that's the name I called the concatenation layer. So stack is a, is a catenate layer, which stacks the data together on the second dimension. Then that goes to our LSTM, which is a single layer 256 node LSTM. That goes to our output processing, which I said before is just the linear layer stack. And then that finally goes to the note decoder, which is a linear layer softmax for the pitch like C4, C5, C6, B, B sharp, 2, whatever. And then it is, then the other thing we have is the note data, which is, like I said before, uh, the, the three pieces of information, the duration of the note, the volume of the note, and the time away, the distance from the previous note. So those three things. And then finally, that goes to our loss graph, which I did modify by adding this times three multiplier on the data, the note data, because I felt like it wasn't getting the timings quite correctly. And I feel like that has improved significantly with our, uh, our latest LSTM network. Like this is, uh, feels like it's doing much better getting things because if you listen to say the actual the GRU output it's doing a lot of like do 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 like nothing's synchronous it's all those uh whatever you call that there's a there's a music word i would know it but i forget it right now see it's like da 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 da
mean, it, it sounds nice. It's just not what the data set does. So I'm just going to actually have a loop this in the background because that was kind of nice. Okay, play and loop. Okie doke. Let's go. Okay, so we have a training RNN. Oh yeah, this I actually failed and uh, I closed the training window. So I had to import it from a backup, but that's done training now. So I don't need that anymore. And then the next part, all of this is the same. Basically, you have a generator function for the data. I'm getting the training results object now instead of just the completed train network. Validation status specified loss function. I just explicitly set that to the loss layer because I'm paranoid. And then we have a batch size, which I mean, whatever, automatic one, it, it's fine. And then we have progress checkpointing, which is new. I set it to my first GPU, which is my 2060 and working precision 12, or sorry, mix, and then time goal of 12 hours. Okay, so if anything fails, the script stops. Okay, and then let's look at our directory structure. Notebooks. Yeah, so that's the one that just finished training. 8, 20, 10, 20, 6, 20, what the heck, okay. Yeah, so. Sorry, let us do. Okay, I'm gonna start training and then you can see. So I'm in my Howl slash notebooks folder. So I do wolf script. Okay. So if I look at all the files in my directory, you see I'm just saving all my MIDI files there. But there is this train rnn.ws, and that is the script that I made by copying all of the notebook code into a file. So if I do dash f and then file name train rnn.ws then it will execute the script that we were just looking at and you can see it's going along validation is 16 songs you can see this model is 3.51282 or sorry 21 3.512812 megabytes which I actually looked at my data set and that is uh, close to what compression for zip compression, lossless zip compression does. But this is more interesting because uh, this is lossy compression and it's actually basically memorizing or to properly memorize. It would have to memorize all of those notes, but it would also have to understand the rules of transposing things in time shifts. So its goal is even more difficult uh, because during training, I run everything through this howl augment data, wherever the heck that is, augmentation, data augmentation. So I have howl augment v1, shakes encoded v1, then I compose a time warp, randomized time warp, randomized pitch shift, up or down one octave, or sorry, 11 semitones. And then finally, I have a volume shift, which is, uh, it just multiplies the volumes by some random number between 0.8 and 1. 
and that the idea here is just so it doesn't memorize the raw volume data and get used to that. Anyway, but yes, speed up, slow down by up to one half or two times. So, let us see how we are doing. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. I didn't expect that. Even though the validation set, as you can see, split train val, data set, we have validation data, length and val. Valgen is a generator function using our validation set. And our val set is based on the validation data. It is using a different collection of songs to validate its performance than it is training on so this one it's actually it's at it's 82 percent good at guessing the notes in the training set but it is also 82 percent or 81.9 percent good at guessing the notes in songs it has never seen before so that tells us that this thing has the capacity to generalize some rules to unknown music pieces that it has not seen before, which is quite fascinating. It's what I wanted to happen. And like I said before, it's possible that with a two layer LSTM, I might get better performance but I really don't have the GPU power to, you know, test this out with a massive cluster of 3090 RTXs or anything like that. So I'm basically stuck with simpler networks that will converge faster. And also while GRUs do converge faster, or not converge, they train faster than LSTMs, I have found they also have a lower top performance compared to LSTMs. So, yeah, I mean, even down to 79% error, which is over 20% note accuracy. This is just note accuracy, by the way. Um, it's still keeping up with, like, there's it's doing well in unknown songs, which is telling me there's something about music that is predictable in this unknown set. So that's really, really beautiful. Really interesting. So yeah, let's actually talk some more about how I am actually rendering these things to high quality audio files because if you recall like cool I mean this works it's just the quality is not I mean honestly the quality like Wolfram has the the environment has surprisingly high quality sound fonts for piano that being said, it's not nearly as good as like, uh, what I'm using is a contact library called uh, Gravitas Piano from Audio Imperia. And it's just, oh man, this the sound quality of this thing is insane. Let us, okay, I made it mad. It's a very slow plugin. I have angered the plugin gods, but okay, I'm just gonna kill the plugin. One sec. Okie doke. There we go. Enable plugin sandbox. Okay, this this might take some time. Uh, I'm gonna enable that and then close it and. Okay, so 
we have this track. We're going to uh, See, is this a plugin? I forget how I do this. Waveform MIDI. I need the keyboard. How do you get to the MIDI keyboard? This is not a plugin. It's like on the track or something. Maybe if I make it small. There we go. Okay. So. And this does you have note velocity and it sounds pretty decent. The semicolon key doesn't work. Hmm. But yeah. Anyway, you get the point. Like, this thing is amazing. Yeah, also, that's that's another trick that I use to make it sound good. Basically, I put the pedal on. The pedal makes it all sound good. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, pedals is overused, but it sounds amazing for slow pieces. So, the pedal is on. That's the only modification. That's the only modification I make to the notes. And it's, like, kind of automatic-ish. So... I don't think, I don't think it's cheating, okay? Anyway. Yeah, anyway, so that's, that's another thing. Okay, I'm gonna open things. Okay, so we just opened the LSTM 416. I'm gonna start playing some of these so I can remember which one I wanted to do. Yeah, that one's interesting. Okay, that's interesting. There was like a weird, a key change at the end of that. Kind of impressive.
73%. Okay. Yeah, but like, look at that. It's it's 73% accurate. Sorry, no. It has a... It's almost 30% accurate on the songs that it hasn't heard. So it's not just memorizing the training data. It's like generalizing beyond that. Quite, quite impressive. It's, it's learning music. Pretty amazing. Anyway, that's what I did. I pressed X and then the thing, ah, I had to restart. That was sad. Okay, so don't press X. If I wanna close it, click on something else. Also, watching things train is, uh, it's bad. It's like, it's a drug and it makes you go crazy. You start to see things in the numbers. It also makes it train slower. So, uh, and train worse. So you better not watch it while it's training. It's bad for you. It's bad for the training. Okay, let's generate some more because that was kind of fast. Let's see if we can get a slow one. That's like kind of like the other two. That one is slower. This also seems really boring. That looks interesting, but we have to wait two minutes for it. I want instant fire. Come on. There we go. Like this. This is instant fire. Okay, that was that was pretty cool actually. 125. Okay, let's do another one. I don't know, that was kind of weird. The ending didn't really like that. Yeah, I mean I think the real power of these things is like I, as someone kind of musical, like I could play a melody or whatever, and then just have the thing do like some auto completion. It could be like auto complete for music, and that would be fun. But this is just looking at randomly generated data, so this is kind of like background noise almost. <laughs> pretty cool man I think all of these are cool uh, it's so hard to choose okay okay whatever let's just do this one 
So we have uh, 1936 dot mid. Okay, so sorry, wrong one. Let's go. 1936 dot mid. Okay. We have that, and we have this. So I need to drag from this onto that. Oh yeah, there we go. It's nice and not super long. Okay, let's do this. So yeah, I mean, it's a nice little piece. It's like 500 notes. Anyway, let's see what it sounds like without, yeah, let's try with no pedal this time. And I don't think pedal is gonna be good for the fast one. <laughs> seems kind of uh, loud. Okay, I feel like I have the pedal on or something. Like it doesn't sound quite right. Okay, that's not on. Sure, I don't know. I don't know. Let's try this. <laughs> adjusting the tempo because like the way it was trained there the tempos are randomized during the training data so it's uh, quite possibly not at a normal tempo it could be up to two times faster or two times slower than it should be so I'm just trying to like gauge what is a good tempo for this piece that is generated
Okay, whatever. I'm just being really lazy. And like, I'm trying to reset it. I'm like trying to reset the pedal in a way that's kind of natural. So really I'm cheating, but let's see. set this to like yeah right there one we should train a neural network to predict the names my my friend already suggested that but that's gonna take some time so human naming what was the AI thing okay I'm getting like you know this is kind of grandiose you know like like okay yeah it's a very powerful and then I, now I feel like I'm at like a ball or something. Like it just got really happy. It's super happy. And then it's like, it's uh, kind of silly. I don't know. And then it's like kind of serious. And then yeah, now it's like kind of hopeful. starts to like go off the rails like uh, like I don't know it's it's like Naruto mode activated you know it's gonna overcome it's gonna overcome all the obstacles say that's like kind of happy kind of silly but also kind of grandiose about like uh, I don't know it's uh starting to, it's starting to diverge a little bit but still it's like 64 68 it's very close and this number is still going downward we have 68.6 68.1 it's like looking good so far anyway <laughs> That's done. I'm going to actually save it to a file. I'll start with the FLAC file 
Actually, no, I'm going to first save it as an edit. So the last one was called Forgotten Memory. This one should be called, uh, like what, Hopeful something. It's a uh, happy. It's like, yeah, they're going to overcome whatever they're, you know, the sky is the limit. They can do anything. It's like very high tide type of thing. Like, oh man, everything's awesome. You know what? This is hard. Save as not with that attitude. Oh gosh, the key thing is so active. I need to close that. What is happening? Cancel. Okay, I need to keyboard close. distracted. I need to figure out how to stop the keyboard thing. Uh, caps lock? Oh no. Control Z. It worked. Okay. Oh, that's cool. So if we just do caps lock. Let's do this again. File, save as. Not. Oh yeah, I'm doing underscores. That is the most cursed, like, type naming convention ever. Underscores with capitals? Why did I do that to myself? Okay. start rendering the file so I start with flack at 9600 quality 8 24-bit note depth or not note but you know waveform depth 
and we're going to render and in 10 hours wait though sorry I need to change one more setting file export render to file uh, it doesn't save it okay whatever I need to say only record marked region because I want it to stop oh gosh I need to yeah that's way better see way faster oh yeah Okay, file, render, and we're going to do an mp3, and we need to add the Orvis info, which is called predictor. This is not with that attitude. things oh yeah and this is a 416 node lstm acoustic okay this is high quality mp3 render beautiful file render to file and we have, what do we have? We need to do a low quality MP3 for people that want low quithering MP3s. Dithering enabled, only render marked. Okay, render, perfect. Okay, and now if we go to exported, we have these three, so not with that attitude, 0 1. This is the flak, which is evident by the size of 8 megs for 20 seconds of audio. That's how you make songs, I guess. Oh yeah, and now I'm going to rename them to just the files. Because they're all export. One, zero dash one. This is the HD one. This is the small one. Small. Okay. So now we have that. Oh yeah, and I don't think I showed you this one. This was how, no, Abyss. This was the one by the 1024 layer, or not layer, 1024 node
Okay, yeah, so that's that. I mean, you get the gist. It will also be on my website when I finish making a post about this, so yeah. Don't want to exit that, that would be sad. Okay, so don't want to exit that either. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's, let's see. My favorite one so far has been the Gru. So let's try some more. I don't know. This one also has some really fun ones. The LSCM, the 1024 node LSCM. I think it ended up being kind of boring. Okay. That one's kind of nice. Ah, they're all nice. Okay, one, three, one. Okay, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna listen to this one more time. It's just that good. <laughs> get a save and then we can move this down again I should start naming these so I don't forget which ones they are oh yeah so the way this thing works is each one of these is like a separate track but as you can see only the first track has contact on it so basically if i play and nothing's in the first track there's no sound so we only listen to the first track but if i drag the most recent lsm 416 into the thing let's make sure this is the one yeah Import. Okay, interesting. That's also pretty short. Whatever. Uh, do you hear how good that sounds? Like this is uh, worth worth every penny. Audio Imperia is good. Except contact is bad because I can't close it without making the program angry. Uh, is this still? Yeah, I think it's frozen. Whatever. Kill. Die, die, die. Okay. Restart. <laughs> there we go. Whatever. Let's try this again. Oh my gosh. Do you hear? Ah. I'm sorry. Let's go.
Oh, no. No! I had it on loop and the loop stopped. Okay. Whatever. Let's just listen to it again. It was pretty good up till then. Interesting. That was weird. I, I don't know about this part. But the beginning was majestic and beautiful. Okay, let's... Let us cheat again. Hold pedal enabled. do something about that because that was weird Okie doke, that was, that was uh, better, I guess. I think it's just meant to be a slower piece. Five, export under to five. Yeah, I don't know what to call this one.
hope this isn't just like regurgitating some piece that exists because that just seems too good to be random-ish, you know? Was I doing the wrong pedal? I don't know, man. Uh. Bye. 
Yeah, I don't think that did what I wanted it to do. Oh shit. Sorry. Wrong one. No, undo. Okay, what did I do? Okay, that is not what I want. I want to erase these. Yes. I guess it is only on off hold pedal hold pedal 64 okay whatever Yeah, the pedal does not sound good there. Yeah, I mean, it's still, I mean, it's kind of starting to overfit, but overall, this is still going down. I guess we'll see how it is in the morning, but this is hopeful. Okay. Thank you. 
this is a, a it's a low quality mp3 okay yeah still the same predictor title hopefully okay This is best quality. Sure. Render to file. This is going to be our flack file. Highest quality. 96, 24 bit. Beautiful. This is underscore small. This is just flack. This is just MP3. Okay, so small MP3. Okay, yeah, so uh, basically that's it. We'll see how the new model does in the morning, but thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the DJ session with a uh, with a programmer. I know this is probably musically horrible. I'm sorry if there's any professionals in the music industry that watch this and cringe, but yeah. I mean, like I said before, I don't know if I said it, but I think this tool, its real utility is in being able to say, like, enter some melody that you want 
or some piece of music that you want to start with. Yeah, that was bad. Anyway, start with something that you want or that that you want and then let the the algorithm kind of generate, you know, possible futures of that of that piece and like allow its n its statistical knowledge of music in general to kind of guide your decisions and guide the creativity process and really in the end like the human is the ultimate arbiter right like i would go through and say like okay yeah uh you know that section kind of interesting but i hate it and then get rid of it and then i would just rerun the algorithm or like not rerun it, but like I would type in or I would add the notes that I actually wanted in that section and then have maybe I would like press the button and then have the thing re-predict the future possible notes and then I would go kind of like, you know, in a hybrid system working with the agent to generate the optimal piece of music that I want. And I think that that could really result in some time savings and really create or really result in some very beautiful very interesting music and this is kind of just its passive patterns generated when starting with a random note and feeding and nesting itself back into itself over and over again so imagine what could happen if I stopped it halfway through, inserted some of my notes, like, oh, I want it to sound more like this, and then let it continue. Like, that is the real future of this thing. So, uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the DJ session, or tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to the DJ session slash development blog. I hope you guys found this interesting. Um, yeah, hopefully I have all the source code in a presentable state by the time you see this and yeah that is that let's see I'm going to clean up this notebook because I really don't need any of this except for yeah I'll keep this where I turn the train thing into a network and I can get rid of this because that's kind of useless because I have a script, the WLS file that does that. Val gen. Don't need that because that's in the script. This is in the script. That's in the script. This is the one I need, and then everything else is in the script. Okay. just going to delete all of that and then delete wait what did I do there okay oh because it wasn't a valid note range when I exported it so it complains but that doesn't matter okay uh yeah that is pretty much it and Yep, I'm going to save this and upload it to GitHub or GitLab or whatever. See ya. Bye.